If the name Gary Coleman doesn't sound familiar, chances are one of the child actor's characters might. Known for everything from different strokes in the late 70s to his voice acting in the early 2000s. Don't worry, mama, there's nothing to it. We won't even make you pick up the end. Coleman was once awarded VH1's title of the greatest kid star. Yet, as the famous young actor grew older, health problems compounded with financial and family turmoil prevented his fame from aging well. While it isn't unusual for a child star to have trouble, when the performer's death was announced in 2010, many fans were surprised and left wondering about the truth behind the tragic life and death of Gary Coleman. In the 70s and 80s, child stars were a huge hit, especially in popular sitcoms. Who could forget Corey Feldman as Reggie Tower or Emmanuel Lewis as Webster Long? If you had the chops and the right amount of attitude, an acting gig could change your entire family's life and make you a Hollywood hotshot all in one. It's possible this is what Gary Coleman's parents were thinking. However, as we got into the 90s and 2000s, it became clear that having all that fame and money as a child could lead to serious difficulties as you got older. Imagine having all the money you could ever want without the knowledge and experience that comes with age. Well, Gary Coleman didn't have to imagine. After he was born, Coleman was adopted by W.G. Coleman and his wife, Edmonia, who happened to be a nurse. This was a lucky stroke for Coleman, who was born with damage and scarring on his kidneys that prevented him from getting enough protein and would need medication and multiple surgeries to treat it. Unfortunately, the medications that prevented his kidney disease from worsening also stunted his growth to under five feet and kept his face looking childlike his entire life. Despite all of this, Coleman would book his first acting gig at just six years old, and his career would take off from there. Four years later, Coleman was cast as young Arnold Jackson in Different Strokes, a sitcom that would make him a superstar. From the very beginning, Arnold Jackson was the heart of Different Strokes, and he became the show's most popular and quotable character. You can't miss what you're looking at. Coleman played the part of Jackson from the time he was 10 years old to age 17, giving almost 10 years of his life to the demanding schedule of a weekly sitcom. The show ran for eight seasons, and by the end of the show, Gary Coleman was a household name. He won multiple awards and was recognized across Hollywood for his talent and attitude. But secretly, Coleman was struggling with everything from health to who he could trust. At work, instead of feeling included and supported, Coleman felt ostracized and isolated because of the health issues that caused him to need consistent medical support. While there were other child actors on set, Coleman was the only one with a disease that was impossible to hide and incredibly tiring. He worked long hours with no accommodations made for his age or condition and got no backup from his agent, adoptive parents, or business partners who should have been looking out for him. While he may have been making thousands per episode, Coleman had no one to advise him on sticking up for himself at work or otherwise, so he was frequently depressed. In the meantime, where was all that money going? Well, we aren't the only ones who wanted to know the answer to that question. Trusting in the relationship that they had, Coleman had been paying his adoptive parents for years while also allowing them to keep watch over his trust fund. By 1986, things changed. Different Strokes was on the chopping block at ABC, partially because of low ratings after eight successful seasons, but also because the star of the show was no longer a happy young boy who looked like a lovable scamp. He was angry and tired and in the middle of a legal battle with his parents. At 17, Coleman sued both of them and his business manager for allegedly stealing over a million dollars from his trust fund. Both of Coleman's parents and his ex-manager denied all the claims he made in the lawsuit and in return sued him back for defamation and for firing them from his team before their contracts were up. By 1990, Coleman's parents were trying to get a judge to grant them a conservatorship, a la Britney Spears, over their son. Based on Coleman's declining health condition, after two failed kidney transplants, his parents tried to claim that he wasn't mentally able to be responsible for $7 million, all he had left after different strokes ended. Instead, a judge denied the petition, and Coleman sued his parents again. During all this, Coleman struggled to find a job that wasn't personally demeaning. 
By 1993, Gary Coleman had won the suit against his parents and business manager, but still couldn't find acting roles suitable for a man of his size and age that weren't crazy ableist or discriminatory against small people. Finally, after discovering his talents as a voice actor, this is worth the wait. Let him try and top our quarter butler. <laughs> Coleman had some success voicing characters in animated shows and video games, which was rare for truly famous actors at the time. He also continued to give some sparse interviews about his life, admitting to his trials with depression and suicidal thoughts. While fans hoped he was on an upward spiral, instead Coleman was headed for bankruptcy. Unable to get title or even supporting roles in real Hollywood projects, Coleman filed for bankruptcy protection just six years after winning the suit against his parents. While he admitted to being partially to blame, it's clear Coleman wasn't totally cool with his adoptive guardians, since he named them and his lawyers as a part of the problem. Kidney disease and its treatment aren't cheap, so this obviously explains some of the loss of Coleman's fortune. But what about crappy investments, like his personalized game parlor in California that never made a dime? Sometimes the call is coming from inside of the house. For about 10 years, Coleman didn't appear in any major works of film or TV and instead turned his eye toward politics. In 2003, he ran for governor of California in the recall elections. Some thought his attempt at governor was a joke since the newspaper that backed him only did so to prove that anyone could become a candidate. Coleman was up for a laugh and ran against several other stars, including Arnold the Terminator Schwarzenegger, who he decided to vote for after quitting campaign efforts. Unfortunately, this didn't really land any positive press for Coleman, who at this point had been almost forgotten by anyone who wasn't a diehard fan of different strokes. Besides a John Cena music video and a few comedy films in the 2000s, Coleman was basically retired. So what happened to Coleman after he quit the spotlight? We know he was down two kidneys with multiple health problems constantly popping up due to the treatment. From frail teeth to constantly having to adjust and utilize the surgical attachments in his body, was Gary Coleman just too tired to continue his life in Hollywood? Or was he discouraged by the lack of roles for someone with his condition? Either way, his personal life was certainly still active almost all the way up to his death, including his marriage and ongoing legal issues. By 2007, Gary Coleman married Shannon Price after meeting her on the set of one of his last films, Church Ball. Apparently madly in love, Coleman and Shannon married only a few months later, much to the surprise of Hollywood, and I'm sure Coleman's parents. At the time, Gary was almost 40, while Shannon was 22 years old, so it wasn't a huge surprise to anyone when things started to go downhill fast. In the first and only year of their marriage, Coleman and Price got into a heated argument in Provo, Utah, and Price was arrested for allegedly domestically abusing Coleman. By 2008, the couple decided to go on the long-running show Divorce Court, supposedly to try and air out any issues with each other and save their marriage. It obviously didn't work very well, although the episode was hugely popular, because by August of that year, the couple divorced. Coleman even went as far as to get a restraining order against Price, claiming she was still trying to live in his house while he was hospitalized for medical complications after the divorce. Price tried to convince a judge that she and Coleman continued to be together until his death in 2010, but the judge wasn't convinced. This was probably for the best since rumor has it, testimony against Shannon Price accused her of constantly cheating on Coleman, abusing him in public and private, and treating him like a neglected child, essentially all of their marriage. It seems like Gary Coleman just couldn't catch a break when it came to having the wrong people around him, and he may have had some anger issues as well. In 2008, when a photographer snapped a pic of him without his permission, Coleman allegedly yelled at the man before hitting him with his car. 10 years earlier, he'd been in court for punching a female bus driver in the face repeatedly after she mocked his career. Despite the negative rumors surrounding his relationship and the end of his career, Gary Coleman's death was still a shock to those who remembered him as silly and sassy Arnold Jackson. However, even in death, Coleman didn't seem to be ready to forgive anyone he thought had done him wrong, and he was very particular about how he should be remembered. At his death, the latest version of his will demanded that he be given no funeral or any other service, but a previous version asked for the funeral to be arranged by anyone without financial ties to him 
which would have ruled out his parents, wife, and management team. In the end, it seems that Coleman at least trusted Shannon Price enough to let her make advanced medical decisions for him, since she made the decision to pull him off life support. The tabloids ran with the story that Price murdered Coleman without his permission but hospital records make it clear that Coleman left his life in her hands. Does that mean that this lonely and tragic child star found real love before his death? We hope so. Gary Coleman died of medical complications in 2010 after falling down the stairs at home and hitting his head. But the mystery of his personal life and career are still drawing in fans today, especially as sitcom remakes are on the rise. Would you watch a Different Strokes remake without Gary Coleman? And if so, who should take his place? Let us know what you think down in the comments below. And don't forget to stay tuned for more true celebrity stories.